how's it going, brother? How you doing? What's, what, what's your name, brother? Sure. Your name's James? All right, brother James, come, come, come over here. Let me talk to you. Oh, you got a hard, you got a hard time standing up? All right, sorry. So, brother James, let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? What's your race? What is evil? You say you found out that it's evil. Hebrew, okay, all praises, all praises to the Most High. So yes, you are a Hebrew, but your nationality is Israel. All right, so what, what would you consider yourself? What would the world say you are? African-American, Jamaican, uh, Haitian? What, what, what does the world consider you? African-American? Okay, according to the Bible, you would be from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Let's, let me show you how we know this, all right? Give me, uh, start verse 45 again. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. So the Most High God put curses on his people, which are the Israelites according to the Bible. He, the Most High God put curses upon his people, and through these curses, we know who the people are today. We know who the Israelites are today. That's why I could tell you that you are Israelite from the tribe of Judah, because those curses are prevalent in these people, right? Come on. Because thou hearkenest not into the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he command thee. That is why those curses was put upon us, because we refuse to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Let me show you one of these curses, all right? Give me verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Most High God said that he was going to bring his people into Egypt again. Now that word Egypt is synonymous or is a representation of something else. All right? He's making a reference to something he said before in the previous chapter. Let's find out what that reference is. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5 and verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. This is the reference. He brought us out of the land of Egypt. Come on. From the house of bondage. From the house of bondage. So what does uh, uh, Egypt mean, brother? Do you know? It just said in the verse. Read it again one more time for me. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. From what? From the house of bondage. From what? The house of bondage. One more time. The house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean? Exactly. Well, say it again. It means slavery. You're 100% right, brother. So let's go back. To Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 and let's replace Egypt with slavery alright come on the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt unto slavery again how with ships with what with ships now but who are the only people in history to ever go into slavery on cargo slave ships bring it up Exactly. You, your ancestors were the only people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were the only people to go into slavery by the, the, by the way of cargo slave ships. Right. That's how we know we are the Israelites today. Because you got to understand, this book was written thousands and thousands of years ago before it even happened. We were in the slavery in 1619. This book was written thousands and thousands and thousands of years before then. So it was prophesied that it would happen to a certain people. And guess what? It happened, and now it became our history. You understand? So now we correlate what was written in the Bible with our history. That's why this book is not a fairy tale. This book is not a religious text. This book is your history book. And we need to dig into our history book and find out who we truly are. So, brother, you have found out today that you're not an African American, that you're not black. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Give me verse 46. Let's find out more. Let's find Let's get a few more curses of how we know that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Because all these curses is only going to happen to one people. You understand? Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee 
for a sign. Now, the Most High God says these curses is going to be placed upon these people for a sign. Now, let me ask you a question, bro. If you look across the street here and you see this church's chicken, how do you know that building is a church's chicken? You see it, right? It's the sign. If that sign was removed from the building and it was just a blank building, how do you know it's in there? You would know. But you know that that building is a church's chicken because of the sign. So the sign is there to identify what it is or what that building is, just like these curses was placed on the people as a sign to identify who they will be in the last days. Come on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. It said it would be, though these curses would be upon these people forever. So that's why back in the 60s, back in the 90s, the same thing is happening today. Back in the 60s, it's the same thing happening over and over and over again because we are still under the curses until this very day. Let's find out some of these curses. Come on. You got, you got a question? When is Satan's rulership supposed to be up? Give me a second. Let, let me uh, finish off with the curses. We got we got to deal with that. All right, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse thirty-two. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given into another people. So it says, our sons and our daughters were given unto another people. Now, when did this happen in our history? When did this happen? Get the uh, lift the sign up. When did this happen to our people where our sons and daughters were given to another people? It happened during slavery. If you look down here, well, what's, what's, what's going on down here? He's on the auction block. He's being sold to somebody else. And we had no power to stop that thing. We had no military might, no power to stop it. And that was also a part of the curse. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given into another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So, ha, let me ask you a question. Have you ever watched a movie called 12 Years a Slave? No? All right, in the movie 12 Years a Slave, oh, Roots, have you ever watched Roots? Roots, exactly. In, in, the, in, the, in the movie Roots, he had a son, right? And his son was sold into slavery. And he cried for his son because he could not get his son back, right? So it's the same thing that happened throughout history. Our sons and daughters were sold unto another people, and we mourned for them because we lost our children. Come on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. And the Most High God said that there will be no might in your hand, meaning you will not have any power to get your children back. You will not have no military might because you couldn't get you couldn't gather together a uh, a uh, a uh, 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 thousand men and go fight for them, could you? You couldn't you couldn't buy them back because we didn't have no money. We had no might in our hand at all to get our children back. We had no military might, no monetary might, no 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 governmental might. We had no might whatsoever, no power whatsoever to receive our children again. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight. Verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. This is another curse that was placed upon our people. It says, we have become an astonishment. You, under, you, you know what uh, the word astonishment means? The word astonishment means it, it's, it's an amazement. Like people will look and be amazed at what is going on. We, you understand we are the only people on the face of this earth that has something called black on black crime. People are astonished like this is, this is crazy. They're killing each other at an astronomical rate. We are the only people that are getting shot down on the streets. That is an astonishment. You understand? These are the, the astonishments that we see to realize that we are the Israelites according to the Bible to wake our people up. Come on. And thou shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations. It says we will be a proverb. You know what a proverb is? The word proverb. The word proverb just means a wise saying, right? 
like uh, all black people love watermelon, right? We have become a proverb. Uh, uh, all, all, black, all, all black males are single parents. They don't take care of their children. That's a proverb. That's a proverb that was placed on our people. It's not, it's not true all the time. Sometimes it is not true all the time, but that's the place on, your, on our people, whether they know you or not. Come on. And a byword. A byword is being called anything out of your God-given name, which is Israel from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Anything out of your God-given name is a byword. So back in the day when they called, when they called our people Negro, that was a byword. When they changed our name again to colored, that was a byword. When they changed our name to Afro-American, that was a byword. And today we're calling ourselves African-American is also another byword. That is out of our God-given name. We should remove these names from us and take the true name, the beautiful name that the Most High gave us. Because Israel means that you're a prince, brother. Did you know that? The Most High God calls you a prince. He is your prince. Israel means prince that has power with God and men. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Because we chose not to serve God for the abundance of all things, because he, he gave us everything we want. When we was in the wilderness, he gave us everything. We wanted food, he gave us food. We wanted water, he, made, he, he gave us water. You understand, in the wilderness, our, our clothes did not wear. Our shoes did not wear. He gave us everything we could ever want. This whole earth belongs to us. But in spite of that, we still chose not to serve him. We still chose not to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. And because we chose not to serve him, not to listen to him, what happened to us? Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Because we refused to serve him, he forced us to serve our enemies. When did this happen? Look, look, give me the sign again. When did this happen? When were we forced to serve our enemies? When, we, when were we forced to serve hard bondage? When were we forced to pick cotton for no money? To chop sugar cane for no money? To, to pick tobacco for no money? For over 400 years? When, were, when did this happen to our people? Happened during 1619 for, uh, for, the, blacks, for the, uh, the black man. The Haitian man, the uh, the Jamaican man, the West Indian man. It happened in 1619 where we was forced to pick cotton, pick tobacco, chop sugar cane for no money whatsoever. Right. So we was forced to serve our enemies. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. The most high God sent these enemies against us. For what reason though? Let me ask you a question. Do, do you have any children? You have children, right? So if you tell your child, uh, I'm going to work. By the time I come home, I want the house cleaned up. I want, I want you to do the dishes. And you go to work, you come back, there's more dishes in the sink than there was before. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to your child? If, if you, uh, you have a child, right? You have a child, right? And the child, uh, you tell your child, look, I'm going to work. When I come back, I want the dishes in the sink clean. You come back, there's more dishes in the sink than before you left. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to your child? Exactly, he's gonna spank that ass, right? It's the same thing that happened to us as a people with the Most High, because the Most High is our Father. You understand? So the reason he sent our enemies against us was for punishment, to get us right. Because after the spanking, it's a correction. Right. The spanking is a correction to, to get your child to do the correct thing. We was doing the wrong things before, and now the Most High God sent the correction, the punishment to us, to get us to do right, to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So we were forced to serve our enemies in hunger. In 1619, we were forced to serve our enemies because if we wanted food back then, who do we have to go to? We had to go to slave master, right? We had to go to him for food. If without, without him, we wasn't eating. We ate when he told us to eat. Come on. Oh, even into today, if you want food, who owns all these establishments? Who owns Publix? Who owns Walmart when they say, you, you can say it. Who? 
folks. Exactly. The same white folks that had you in slavery way back when. So if you want food, you have to go grocery shopping, you have to go to them. Come on. And in thirst. And in thirst. Just like back then. You understand back then, we had to work from sun up to sun down. And we only received one pint of water to drink per day. One pint. You got to understand, that's not enough for a, a human being to sustain themselves. That's why we had to receive our water uh, in other ways, like watermelon. That's why we as a people ate a lot of watermelon, because it was rich in what? In water, right? Even until today, who owns Zephyr Hills? Who owns Aquafina? Right. The same white folks that had you in slavery and gave you one pint of water to drink per day. That, you, you see how these curses are, was upon us back then and they're still here today? Those same curses that was put upon us back then, we're serving those same curses today. That's how we know that you're not African American. That you're what? That you're an Israelite, according to the Bible. That's right. Come on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. If we if we wanted uh real quick, let me finish, let, if we wanted clothes to wear, slave master gave us the clothes, right? Let me ask you a question. If I look on your tag, the back of your tag right now, what's it gonna say? What's it gonna say? Is it is it gonna is this gonna say made by Ty, uh, Tyrone in the hood? No. What's it gonna say? It's gonna say made by made in China, made in Indonesia, made in uh, uh, the U.S., made in Taiwan. It was made by your enemies. So the same thing that happened back then, guess what? It's still happening today because we have to serve our enemies in nakedness. If we want clothes to wear on our backs, we have to go to them for it. All right, come on. And in want of all things. The Most High God said anything that you could ever think that you would want, you have to go to your enemies for it. If you have a house and you uh, you want a mortgage, who you got to go to? If you want a car loan, who you got to go to? If you want an education, who you have to go to? If you want a birth certificate, death certificate, who you have to go to? A marriage license, who you have to go to? House. Everything, everything that you could think that you would want, even if you want to start up your own business, who you have to go to? Anything that you think you could want in life, you would have to go to your enemies for it. Why did this happen again? Because we refused to listen to our God. We refused to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.